it's a problem or it's plain it's a heartache either way but be Hello 
everybody. Welcome. Happy, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day today. Thank you so much for joining us in our exchange live sessions here with the Jazz Exchange. My name is Candice Reyes and I am one of the founders uh, here today and, and I am excited um, as we are celebrating uh, Women's History Month. Uh, t- today is the last day that we celebrate the actual Women's History Month, but it's never the last day to celebrate women. Um, so we're really excited for all the the wonderful women that we've had on the show. And of course, for today, our special guest, which I'll be bringing on shortly. Um, if you're new to our page, if you're new to our uh, live session, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. These happen every Wednesdays uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we've had, I mean, we're, we've, we've been doing this for, we're almost going to be hitting a year uh, in April. So we've been doing this for a good year already. And uh, we're, we've had so many amazing guests. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, you can follow us on our social media pages, Facebook, YouTube. We're also doing this live on, on YouTube. Um, and so hi to everybody else on YouTube as well. Um, please, please check out the Jazz Exchange uh, website. You can find out more information about my husband and I, Abel Mireles, and myself. We are the founders of this organization, and uh, we continue to do work. We're continuing to support, and our mission is building communities through music and education, and it's really, really important uh, that you kind of go in to see what we're doing uh, recently and what we've done in the past. Um, also, we want to bring up um, uh, the different programs that we currently um, have and we we need support with is our uh, the Jazz Exchange Education Program. So this program has already been on its third year um, and we've had three groups or generations of alumni that have come through the education program. We've partnered up with uh, Jazz House Kids, Melissa Walker and Christian McBride, uh, who I used to work with and they're dear, dear friends of ours. Um, and we we continue to build this partnership where um, students from our hometown, I'm from originally from El Paso, Texas, and my husband's from Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico, so we're the border town. Uh, and so we get students from our hometown and we're, we've opened it up to students from even the West Coast uh, to come and have these opportunities to be part of the Jazz House Kids summer workshop where they get to meet Christian McBride and they get to meet all these wonderful artists that come uh, through this beautiful program of Jazz House Kids. We're also partnered up with uh, Smart from Juarez, Chihuahua, and that's another um, support that we really, really uh, cherish because they, they give the opportunities to young generations of Hispanic Latinos to be able to get these opportunities to come and and experience something wonderful. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website, how you can sponsor a student, uh, how you can give them, you know, the opportunity. Uh, We recently have two of our alumni who just uh, um, graduated and now they're uh, at the new school uh, here in New York City. So we're always, you know, supportive and super proud of everything that they've done. Uh, we've also done our Jazz Exchange Relief Fund that literally started probably a month after COVID hit, and it's still up and going. Um, this uh, relief fund really supports the artists. We we do a program called the Virtual Jazz Sessions, which you can check out on our YouTube page. Um, and we hire musicians to do virtual programming. Uh, we, we do the whole back-end production, uh, mixing audio masters to do just a, a really you know, creative job while we're still at home, staying safe um, and, you know, unable to work, uh, you know, in public. So this is a way to support that. And if you want to continue to support that, you know, please check out previous virtual jazz sessions on our YouTube page and our website so you can see where where that money is going to to really support these artists. So this month we're celebrating uh, Women's History Month. And uh, we're so, so excited because we've had past uh, guests who have been trailblazers, inspirations, um, you know, women that are leaders for us young women, you know, up and coming generations. It really, really is important um, to, you know, recognize the women who are working hard and doing a lot um, today and in the future. 
So each year, Women's History Month offers an important opportunity for us to shine a light on the extraordinary legacy of trailblazing American women and girls who have built and shaped and improved our communities and nation. Throughout America, uh, American history, women and girls have made vital contributions, often in the face of discrimination and undue hardship. Courageous women marched for, for and won the right to vote, campaigned against injustice, shattered countless barriers, and expanded the possibilities of American life. As we celebrate the contributions and progress of women and girls, we must also reflect on the extraordinary and unequal burdens they continue to bear today. So during Women's History Month, uh, let us honor the accomplished and visionary women who have helped us build our communities, including those whose contributions have not been adequately recognized and celebrated. So that's really our mission for uh, this whole month, you know, really focused on highlighting women in, in this time um, and, and the equality and all the things that they do for our community. I'm super, super excited. Uh, for those of you who know me, uh, you all should know that this special guest tonight is a huge inspiration to my musical career. Um, she has molded some of the, the things that I do in my uh, vocal career to really inspire me and to keep me um, going with being a Latina, being um, a, a vocalist, being a band leader. I mean, she is an acclaimed uh, Chilean jazz vocalist who is also a producer, a songwriter, arranger, and composer, and has worked with many, many amazing musicians and continues to work with many amazing musicians today. And so without further ado, today I want to bring on our special guest, uh, the lovely, the amazing Miss Claudia Acuña. How are you, Claudia? <laughs> Hola. ¿Cómo Hello. está? <laughs> Bien, gracias. Thank you so much. This is so awesome to be um, here with you and I love what you guys are doing with the community and where you build in. Um, it's amazing what uh, can everybody do and all together when we come together, you know, <laughs> this has been a challenging year for all of us. Yes, all of us. definitely. Thank you so much. I mean, it's it's such an honor to have you here today, um, you know, even though we're all at home, you know, we've all had to, you know, work on so many things, change so many things in our in our lives. And especially, you know, touring artists such as yourself, full time musicians, um, you know, who who focus on just music and whose livelihood is music. And so we really appreciate your your time and for you being here. We can't wait to, you know, dig in and talk a little bit more about so many cool projects and things that are are coming up for you. Um, so thank you so much. And where where are you currently tuning in from live? Home, Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Yay. Shout out to Brooklyn. <laughs> You're in Brooklyn, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to BK out there. Everybody, everyone who's out in Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. So thanks so much, man. That's great. So we're, we're not too far. We're across the bridge. We're in New Jersey. So we're not okay. too, too far. <laughs> but One of my dear friends has a great Chilean restaurant in New Jersey. Maybe after the this whole thing gets a little more figure it out we can meet there in oh, person. that would be wonderful i would <laughs> love to do that love to try the chilean food over here um so anyways i kind of want to go into uh you know oh my god well before i even start i have to i'm having like the little fangirl moment right because uh like i said earlier those who know me like i literally grew up like hearing your music and one of the biggest influences that really helped me to 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 even just write music to begin you know thinking about okay I can do jazz standards but also have like arrangements and stuff like that and I think that was something that really attracted me to you and your singing and your arranging and composing and so I just kind of wanted to you know 
touch base with you and see, you know, born and raised in Chile. What part of Chile are you originally, were you originally born in? Well, I was born in Santiago. Ah, in Santiago. Right. But very shortly we moved south and I was pretty much raised um, in Concepcion. Mm. Spent a large amount of time in this other city called Rancagua and Graneros, which were was still actually most of my parents' family before it was my grandparents. So, you know. Wow, that's great. And are you, are you, uh, do you have any siblings, uh, musician friends or, or family members? No, I have two brothers. I'm the first child, the only girl, and I have two brothers after me, you know. Just no like musicians. me, I'm the same. Two brothers, <laughs> only girl. so born and raised in chile and 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 you were you you moved in different parts of 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 the area what were some of your first influences in jazz and you know how old were you like when did when did claudia acuña like first start becoming this amazing person starting to listen to music and be influenced by this when did that all happen you know it's very the radio I've said this many times you know because when when I review my story and I think about how things started you know the radio play a really strong role Mm -hmm. and my parents per se were not musician and my mother watch uh, on the tv she likes to tune into musicals Mm. and I think really early I met through those musical people like Louis Armstrong, like Duke Ellington, Billie Holiday, Frank Sinatra. Mm. Um, Because of that uh, window. And then the other thing that she enjoyed very much was the soap operas, but Ah. from from Brazil. And then then the music at the time was like Jovine, Elise Regina, Dejavan, like, Oh. I mean, hello, like, <laughs> who, really, who else? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and even though I was really, really young, you know, the music, I can see how all this and tangos, my parents mm. listened to a lot of tangos and folk troll. And I personally started because it was there available for me. Mm. It was uh, folk music traditional Chilean music that's how I started and in the choir because I was never per se encouraged to I was never put in the conservatory or Mm. to study anything you know so everything that I learned especially in my early age without knowing it was through the radio the tv and school Mm. okay and when I start singing in school one of the teachers sort of said in the choir, you know, sort of like I was messing around and improvising, I guess, you know, according <laughs> to that person, oh, you like jazz. And I was like, what? And he's, yeah, you like jazz. And I was like, what is that? And then it was this like door, you know, like from a mansion, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And, and I remember getting my first recorded or cd so to speak uh errol garner Ooh. and sarah Hall live in japan i still have those cds oh it was mesmerized and I bet. Because, because then i knew that this sort of natural music that i was very attracted to was called jazz then i was like trying to like swim in and get every little information that I could find available, you know, which it was not a lot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's amazing. I, I always, I always feel it's so interesting to get to know somebody's first, like, listen of, of jazz or their album, you know, it's funny because everybody always remembers like that first album, right? That first, yeah. that first song or that first, yeah. whatever you, you encountered through jazz music, um, that really inspired yeah. you or to attach to that genre. That's, that's beautiful. I mean, Sarah Vaughn and I mean, wh- what, what more can you ask for? <laughs> right. Because, you know, then we will sometime 
a neighborhood teaches at certain hours you could uh, take an antenna outside and we will get wow. some radios from different parts of the world. Later, as I start studying jazz and study the, the, the history and the tree, mm -hmm. I realized that a lot of the people at her was like, oh my God, I remember the song. And this is like Miles Davis, you know, and mm -hmm. Ella and certain things that you start putting names on it and faces right. and I was just like my goodness my life completely <laughs> switch you know yeah that's beautiful I'm glad I'm glad you had that because then you know you're here now you know that's that's what makes it beautiful and the the, the story yeah. of that and so and, uh, oh go ahead sorry no go ahead, sorry. I explore with with different genders too you know mm. from like traditional Chilean music to rock and classical because I just wanted to 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 learn mm -hmm. and because I did that the more I learn about jazz the more I knew I wanted to do jazz oh that's beautiful I mean yeah I mean so much inspiration comes from different genres right different mm -hmm. and ja that's where jazz you know comes about you know we listen to hip-hop you know that's like what we always say right listening to hip-hop today and and blues and country music how all that has been influenced by jazz which is the American art form um, and so it's so important to you know recognize that um, so I wanted to ask you what then was your turning point um in your musical career as a jazz vocalist like when did you come to new york like what when was that turning point for you once you kind of started your interest in jazz like what, what when was when did all that happen um i finished high school i went for a almost a year and a half to college in Santiago just to make my parents feel at ease <laughs> that I was in college and that I was not crazy. <laughs> and really shortly after that, uh, I, I let everybody know that I was moving to New York mm. and people were, my parents were scared. Yeah. And some of my friends and musicians thought I was crazy and they make fun of me. Like, what are you thinking? And by all means, I never came with that idea of being anything. I just wanted to come here and, and go to school, have that chance because we didn't have schools like that in Chile. Mm. It was either classical or a uh, music teacher. Mm. And I wanted to really dig in jazz. And, and, and then I started meeting people that would tell me about the jam sessions. And all I wanted was to go to the Vanguard and... <sighs> stay up all night from club, <laughs> club to club and and go to school you know yeah. so i moved here uh, i arrived here october 8 1994 oh, wow. another another turning point in my life that i remember every detail yeah, i'm sure <laughs> that's awesome so in 94 you came into you came to new york you moved over here and you yeah. went to school here in new york no, I auditioned for a couple of schools, but I couldn't afford it. Mm. I didn't have the money and I didn't really speak English and I didn't know how to apply for scholarships. And at the new school of all places, uh, one of the teachers from the audition that I gave them, they helped me to fill up something. So I got half of a scholarship at the time mm -hmm. and I needed only the other half for a year. And then they will help me to get a hundred percent scholarship or something like that. Right, you know? right, right. Wow. I went back home and I didn't get anything because at the time there were only scholarship for classical music. So I came back, I went to the same person and I said, I'm sorry. And they're like, I'm sorry, but Anyway, you're going to have to do it the old way. And here's a list of all the jam sessions. And, and then I start going to small. And from small, I start going to every Tuesday to Barry Harry's workshop. Ooh, yeah. Wow, that's so amazing. I mean, it's, it's so crazy how the assumption that just because you're a musician and you come here, like everybody just already thinks like, oh, you went to school here, like, 
it's hard. It's hard to kind of go through that whole process. First of all, being from another country and coming in, first of all, is like the step rate right, of I'm coming into New York, like the 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 mecca and the 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 middle of everything. But then also the the whole process, like I think the vulnerability and the the humbleness that you just you know shared with us that like you didn't you didn't you weren't speaking English it was hard it was a struggle at the challenge right of 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 coming here first of all and moving to somewhere you're just like not familiar with but then having that opportunity and and that's amazing to have teachers at the universities or somebody to just still kind of be that mentor right or somebody that that kind yeah. of pushes you into a Hey, go check this out. And that's how New York, New York is, right? Through the jam sessions and meeting people. I mean, I'm sure that's been your experience. I was encouraged, too. I was really encouraged that, I mean, it, it was mesmerized for me to walk into a building, a facility, and see all these pianos and instruments, <laughs> and then sing with the trio of the teachers. I don't even remember who was, you know? <laughs> I, I, I was just so nervous, but at the mm -hmm. same time, so... Um, light up yeah. energetically you know and i didn't per se have this plan of i'm gonna stay right i came because also i did not as, as afraid i was i did not want to ask myself later in life what if uh, and i'm because like, yeah. my best friend used to tell me but what are you going to do there i said i'm just going to try to get in the school and if not at least I want to go and have that experience mm -hmm. and say I was sitting at the vanguard and, you know, maybe I'll run into some of my idols. <laughs> Shortly, you know, I was doing, going to jam session and I was a dishwasher and a walking dogs and babysitter. And then I got a gig doing dishwashing and coaching at the Blue Note. Oh. So I could, I could not... Uh, I could see a lot of shows for free and not have to pay the giant ticket. <laughs> and I needed to make cash because at the right. time I had already spent on the little money that I brought. Yeah. You know? Wow. So, wow. That's so cool. I, I mean, thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's it's really cool to hear, um, you know, how that how that works, how it, how it evolves, right? Where you come and everybody has their first story of New York. Yeah, also, when I start going to places, you know, and it was so alive at the time, you know, yeah. like the, the 90s, you know, you were still running to Ray Brown, Betty Carter, like, you know, and it was this club and this club. And I just couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm jealous. I wish I wish I was born earlier so that I could have. <laughs> experience that you know just to even like come and be like wow like you know and there's still I mean till this day I mean there's still you know you're still seeing greats and you're part of them you know you're part of that uh you know group of people now that are inspirations and idols to a lot of us younger generations that you know listen to your music and have been inspired and so I'm I'm curious now, uh, we have some music and things that we want to share uh, today with our audience members. And so your recent album, uh, it's called Turning Pages, which was released in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Tell us a little bit about this, because I, I was, you know, I, I know all your albums. I know um, everything from, you know, from the win from the South to the, the, in este momento, like, I... I was like, when is Claudia going to put out another album? And so I'm really, I'm really curious as to, you know, this new album, what, what, how did it come about? What was the whole idea of, of it? Uh, give us a little insight on that. I'm, I'm curious. Ooh, um, this album is the first album under my sort of little label. And it's my first and is, is an independent um i've never taken this long between doing an album um some personal things yeah life gotten you know and i took some space um and in between that you know some of the songs like i wrote one when i was pregnant you know mm. I'm, a, I'm a parent i'm a mom 
Um, and then a few others were written a few months or in that year that we recorded, you know, and and I decided to do the ind independent inspired by by a couple of friends and colleagues, you know, uh, the freedom that I needed. This mm. is the title set turning pages. I needed music for me and what I do is beyond a career. It's been my my call, my purpose, my what drives me, you know, the the way the, the reason why many things have lingered and happened in my life. So it's a very personal record because also I showcase more than ever my writing, something that I haven't really show, you know? Yeah. Also, I do mostly this album in Spanish, which has been always the opposite. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it, it took that time, you know, and each song has an amazing story. Uh, and everything is like a little box, a little chunk of my life that when you hear it, you can interpret it, you know, right, if, if you wish. But for me, each of them is like this page, like, I'm turning it. Oh, that's beautiful. And then chopped it. You know. <laughs> a few little and torn also, pages or <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, and that, you know, it gets burned. And mm -hmm. I feel with that album, I become again in like the Phoenix bird. Oh. I born. I come back or born again with new feathers and oh. that's that's what it is this album oh that's beautiful well i can't wait let's let's hear this first tune um mm -hmm. and we could talk after the let's listen to it first and then we can talk about this song um and kind of you know what what inspired you to to write this song so we're going to listen to um but beautiful by miss claudia cunha from her latest album turning pages did you want to mention something before we listen to it I didn't write the song. Oh, you didn't this, write the song. Okay. No, this is a very, this is the only standard in this because I didn't want to leave that oh. part of me that is super important as a singer. And after all these years of not putting a record out, out in this song means a lot to me. Okay. So let's listen to But Beautiful on Claudia Acuña's latest album, Turning Pages. a problem
Wow, that was be- that was beautiful. That was you making me <laughs> you making me reminisce. Oh, you know? I was just going to say that like I hope like some of you who are watching like even watching you like listen to it, I can tell like it takes you back to what when you probably wrote it. Like I don't know. I just like it's I didn't write it. No, well, I mean I, the the singing it, excuse me, because I right. that's a isn't that a a, a that was Jimmy, Van Jimmy Van Fusen? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. I I do yeah. remember the song. I'm sorry. But I don't want to get in trouble. Right, right. <laughs> they they block us on here. <laughs> <laughs> but was this a was this an arrangement you wrote or was it arrangement yeah. that was Okay, okay. Yeah, it's an idea and arrangement, you know, I work really oh. close with my musicians and friends and I had the ding 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 and uh. I worked so close with them and you know like it, it, it make me think about all of them you know like uh, Juan Herrera is on the guitar and is who produced this album and he's like uh. Uh, you know uh, someone who's been playing with me for a long time and that's usually how I been doing it in my music career I always have this long chunks of time with certain musicians um Carlos Henderson is on the bass oh uh, Pablo Vergara is on the piano uh and Yayo Cerca is on drums mm. and uh is a special guest in one song is uh Grewa Moret in harmonica a harmonic yeah and then john cower and michael olatuja in another song oh that's beautiful yeah. i mean i well first of all this standard this is a beautiful standard in in general i think like um you know there's you you can hear it in so many from so many different singers but this arrangement just brings like i am so familiar with your writing and your composing that i i i'm always I'm always uh, like, wow, this is like, I, I never know what to expect with like your arrangements. And I think that's what I love about your writing and your composing is that, you know, I never know like what's going to happen next. And and I think uh, that's the beauty of Claudia Cunha um, and, and, and what you do, you know, the, the you can tell your passion and how deep you get into something like this and, and your writing and just... It just really means, you know, a lot. And it, I'm always, I'm always, again, big fan girl. I, I, I got to bring it up. Like everybody knows <laughs> my mom is just like, you're going to be talking. I was like, I know, mom. I know. She was like, compose yourself. <laughs> hey, believe me, I, I, I have the same experience with a few other yeah. singers. That I love. And, and it's, I've had a chance. yeah. And, you know, and, you know, I was, 
recently we were talking about or I've heard you know, on 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 uh, online, and I've seen you know Robert Glasper uh, mentioning to you know young musicians about you know, hey, don't be calling me and asking me for my charts. You got to go and listen to it. He's like, when I was young, I wasn't calling you know Chick Korea and telling him for my. Char- I think he kind of mentioned that, and and so I I had that experience where when I was listening to your music, there was times where I just said, I want to sing this exact arrangement from Claudia Acuña and like when I had my band we 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 pulled we did a the thrill is gone oh. we did pure imagination and prelude oh. to a kiss from from that when from the south album and I mean literally I mean I, we did our best obviously you know and we just listened and transcribed you know my husband did some of the transcribing and and stuff like that and so it was just it's so beautiful to hear that, you know, how musicians can be so inspired by something that you, you write and arrangement and everything like that. So, man, that's I just love it. Be- but beautiful. Go check out that that um, that album. And we'll, we're going to be showing some more uh, today. But I wanted to also bring up um, Claudia was, you know, as we celebrate Women's History Month, you know, mm-hmm. and you have been an inspiration to many of these young um women and Latinas today, um, you know, bringing popular music from Latin America and South America and all, you know, your experiences and influences. What have been some of the changes you've noticed happening today that may have been challenges for you as a woman in your earlier career? I... I mean, if I can look back as back as in Chile, um, sometimes being the only woman in general, you know, and not having women my age that I could hang out and kind of share certain similarities of feelings. Mm. Um, How many people took them time to take me serious. And even when I moved, some people were like, what is she doing? You know? Mm. And then, you know, when I move here with all the challenges already to not see any other Latinas around or Mm. other women or other musicians from Chile, which right now, all of those, are completely different, you know, mm-hmm. like you, I see more women everywhere. I see more Latinas. And in New York, I can name just two more female musicians. They're from Chile and they're amazing, you know, like Melissa Aldana and Camila Mesa. And that didn't happen when I first moved here, you know, and those are women that I want to mention because also we celebrate in Women. yeah of course like, yeah yeah I'll leave the boys out for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know just from that it's a completely different picture mm-hmm. you know just before the pandemic I was back home um singing for this festival and supporting my hometown and a dear friend of mine a musician who has uh the Concepcion big band mm. And on the first rehearsal, you know, I walked in and the first I see is three girls, young women playing in it. And I was like, yes, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, that that already for me is now a, a different picture that then. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that's yeah. How how just a few years can be a huge difference. Right. And seeing young women and females and and I I'm sure you 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 know you probably don't realize how inspirational you are to a lot of you know Latina women and young girls who look the same who have you know have the same you know we can't some of us who don't speak the language or some of us who do or who are scared to come over here because of certain challenges and barriers so again you know it's always great to see that but again is worth to take the risk because other women before us have taken the risk right. for us to 
be where we are. And it's our job and our responsibility to keep pushing for other women, you know? Uh, like, I, I, I've said it many times, I remember asking in a couple of albums before, like to be put there as a co-producer. And I was like, yeah, I co-produced this. I was just, I didn't just come to the studio and went in my booth and sing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have limitations and I work extremely close with my musicians because I have certain limitations due to not have had the formal studies mm -hmm. and certain things that I'm still missing or sort of behind compared to my level of ideas. And and also for me, the way I have a band, we always I always feel the music is a way of having a conversation. And I love to put a topic and see what everybody has to say about it. That's how I see music too. Oh, love it. I love it. And speaking of, you know, you being a producer, um, you've co collaborated with many um, masters, you know, and, and musicians, uh, uh, Arturo O'Farrell, uh, bassist Avishai Cohen, who also co-produced, you know, your album, uh, win from the south and having that experience and and what you said with Juancho Herrera to also you know also being part of your um, album with this turning pages this newest album how has your experience been working you know with instrumentalists as either a producer or a co-producer I mean that really you know as a vocalist being a producer in itself right when sometimes people don't realize is that you're doing everything, you're thinking about everything, whether the limitations, you know, musically aren't happening or not, you're thinking of the whole theme, the process, the how everything's going to happen. But also having that, you know, amazing artist such as, you know, what we just mentioned, how has that, you know, experience, you know, been for you and the influences that it has helped in your music today? I mean, it's been great in general. And it's many more people that are in that list of names who have um, been in many ways, you know, collaborators or, or mentors. And then as you are, as you, I always feel like because I didn't go to school, every opportunity that I had to learn, I was like a sponge, mm. you know? Like I remember sitting next to Joe Furla, you know, who record, uh, did pretty much my first four albums. Wow. Uh, sorry, my first three albums. And he's a legend by himself in that field and learning when he was mixing and him explaining things and me asking questions, which later on, it gives me more confidence and is a clarity that you bring to the table so that people that collaborate with you, they know even better how to guide you, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like I work with Jason Linder. He was, he worked, we worked together for 12 years, wow. pretty much. Jason and uh, Juancho, you know, I work with Billy Child and like you mentioned, Arturo and everybody brings something to the table when the energy is correct, you know? And on all those stages, I was very fortunate to work with those people and on those times, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's amazing. It's great to hear how that evolves, right? And, and it's also friendships, I think, you know, that you build um, and people yeah. that you get to know. But at well, this... Partnerships, you know, I learned through the years and that is a friendly way about what we do because we love what we do. Mm. And you make connections sometimes with people when you jump to play a song and it's just this fire in it and you might never see them again. Yeah. But you you call them friends and and it is a friendly way. It is a great energy. It, you build some great friendships and some people that become family, you know, yeah. the family that you adopt, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I also want to bring up this next um, video that we that's also on your recent album, uh, Turning Pages. Um, it's called Aguita de Corazon. And I just wanted to 
you know, for the audience members tuning in tonight, um, what what is this? You know, you wrote this song, correct? Yes. <laughs> OK, so <laughs> just in case, because, you know, sometimes there's a song that could be the same title as something else and you, you never know. But I know this was the one you originally wrote because yes. I have seen this uh, video, which is amazing. But yeah, give us a, a little insight on how, you know, why is it called Aguita de Corazón? What is the song about? So we get yeah. kind of a, you know, an idea. Aguita de Corazón is, comes from my own uh, struggles and pain and sadness uh, and inspire at the same time on this tradition from home. We make tea for everything. <laughs> we can cure your completely with any tea you have a headache you your toes <laughs> your heart and um, is even a tea called quita pena which is like for your sadness you Aww. know <laughs> so as i was like working in this idea and the feeling that came very natural i decided that this was going to be a song i'm a very visual person so um about that, about how you make this tea with all those pains and all the sorrows mm. and you make it and you put some sweetness and you drink it a little by little as it helps you to move forward and hope for new beginnings and better days. Beautiful. So let's take a listen to this original song, Aguita de Corazón from Claudia Acuña and on this latest album Turning Pages so this will be a video Chile okay oh beautiful so now we're gonna see some parts of Chile so here we go la pena eclipse de luna en cualquier lugar agüita de corazón pa pasar la pena son ilusiones que la pena ya sale la luna y salgo a cantar agüita de corazón pa pasar la pena sonrisas que se pierden al pasar Paso lento que me lleva por la sombra para ver si acaso sale el sol. Busco en un vacío donde solo el tiempo vino sin saber.
que la vida se marchita sin sonrisas, sin despertar, agüita de corazón pa' pasar la pena, son ilusiones que Beautiful. Wow, Claudia. I absolutely loved the shots of parts of Chile and, and how the, the song and the, the video just, you know, captured the essence of your of your song, Aguita de Corazón. Beautiful. I love it. Um, we were just talking a little bit about it. Like where where and what part of, of Chile was this, you know, filmed? Uh, this was film uh, in a place called Colina, which like is a little outside of Santiago. And it was filmed by my dear friend, or brother from another mother, <laughs> uh, Alfredo Silva, Alfredo who's Silva. a filmmaker and the clothes were from my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Organic. It was natural. <laughs> it was all done like really one of those phone calls. So you're in Santiago for how long? Um, <laughs> going tomorrow. You're leaving tomorrow? Okay, I'm coming in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a video. Oh my God, that's beautiful. I love it. If you guys want to, can they? Can people find it also on YouTube or on your channel? That's yes, beautiful. It's on my YouTube channel and soon there's going to be links on my website. I'm terrible with technology. I'll be updating things on my website this next week after spring break. Beautiful. Yeah. So please, you know, go to um, Claudia Acuña's YouTube page and subscribe. And uh, you can check out some of her videos. This one that we just saw and some of our uh, other videos that that I'm sure you have on your on your channel. Um, so from your experience, Claudia, can you elaborate more on how the music industry has been changing and you know how either it has benefited you with this new change or not because of this pandemic i think so much has changed right with just in general but you've had the experiences of working with labels and and being a producer and being part of the music industry can you kind of elaborate on on some of that and, you know, maybe just your experience in the music industry and the changes that have been happening? Well, when I first got signed, I was really young and I had no idea that that was possible. Mm. And unfortunately, I was very naive and inex inexperienced and I made a lot of mistakes early and at the same time i was very fortunate and i'm super grateful for like the experience and to be signed and verve yeah and i was told that i was the first latin american singer to be signed as a jazz vocalist all those stuff you know yeah. but also um uh, we and, and artists like me, we were the first, last generation that had that opportunity to have those record deals and how the industry used to be. Because right then it, it was when everything was starting to become digital. Mm. And the CDs were starting not to sell as in like three, four years after that, it was when things really 
changed. changed. And now with the pandemic and everything, um, as we were talking off camera, I've always encouraged and I, people always ask, oh, well, how can we support musicians? I mean, first of all, the independent musicians like me and go to a band camp if musicians, if you know that your artists have their projects or music in band camp because all the revenues go to the artists and not like iTunes or Spotify that mm -hmm. yes, it's great to be on those uh, platforms. places yeah. and platforms, but it's most of us know they pay really, really little, almost nothing. You know, as many articles where someone like Bruno Mars will have millions and millions of, of plays, you know, and of Pharrell and they're get a check of, I don't know, <laughs> thousand dollars yeah soon. yeah so ridiculous i is is the business change and i had all this amazing experience from verve to do my last album on marsala's music and have mm -hmm. worked with Granfer as a producer wow. and one of my idols and have that opportunity and learn so much from each of these people about the music the history how they are with their music you know it gives you a lot of strength and confidence uh to keep you know respecting your own process sometimes mm -hmm. even when you don't feel so strong or so like because it's, it's not easy right um and now that i'm an independent because i always inspire again and wanted to take a chance to be the owner of my masters to have more control um, the way the industry is, you know, n not a lot of labels are signing and I, I didn't have a label that it was interested in me anymore. And this idea came an opportunity to do be independent like many. Mm -hmm. And it's been a great experience again, because with this album, I learned deeply, deeply what goes behind and, and even deeper on producing and yeah you know it, 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 a lot of details that before i was not involved because i was signed by a label you know right right yeah i mean you bring up some great points you know please you know support artists in their band camp i mean band camp has been one of the platforms that really has given that full percent you know of support to the artists and that revenue so when you see artists that are asking, you know, just like what Claudia says, or they're independent, they're not on a label, and they're asking for your support to purchase on Bandcamp, I mean, it really makes a big difference. It really, it really impacts the whole music industry. And I think that's so important to know nowadays. Right, and especially for the people that feel like, because <clears throat> as we were uh, talking early, many people don't know what actually the artists receive from some of these platforms right and they want to have our music and they want to support us and it's the same uh system and i invite everybody to explore in band camp to support artists that you like and maybe even discover other artists that are there <laughs> right yeah definitely um yeah so please you know we'll be putting a, on the on the chat a link of uh claudia cunha's band camp um so please go on to that and you know you can purchase the music uh through that band camp link um and purchase the, the album the turning turning pages the, the latest album i mean you, trust me you're gonna want to hear you're only hearing three songs tonight but you're gonna want to hear the whole thing it, i i guarantee it I invite you. <laughs> Please. Um, and so, you know, we talked how important it was for you to, you know, release this album independently. But, you know, this this next video that we're going to showcase um, was a special project, right, uh, that you kind of put together. Obviously, it's a, a song that's on this album, but this was a video um, that you, you know, you kind of put together. Can you give us, uh, 
you know, some some backline on what what was this uh, video that we're about to watch? What how did it all come about? Like, what was your envision? Like, what why was it a project for you? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, as you know me as an artist, you probably can sense this unstoppable kind of take risk. So with my friends and co-producers and partners in crime, a lot of our <laughs> production, we decided to do this live streaming, which is very different than any other live streaming in the sense that we did it from the Music Academy Theater from Northampton. Um, oh, okay. We did it live. And we had a live audience, just like the way we're speaking. We had a live audience by Zoom. I have all this um, panels in front of me where I could see people, everybody who wanted to show their faces. Mm. And not everybody wanted to. Right. Or offer, but it was a, a, a chance for people to, and I could interact and I did. And this song in particular is the one that I closed the second show. This was two shows. The first one, it was at 3 p.m. Okay. Be able to reach out to different uh, time zones. And it was a retrospective of all my albums as oh. an artist. And the second one, it was a very uh, sentido, like mm -hmm. humble tribute to El Arte del Bolero, the art of Ooh. the bolero. By, in my perspective, and the way I, you know... <laughs> And uh, but this particular song and this show was intent to celebrate and star the month of international women. And this song, Hey, I wrote it to myself in a way and to many women, you know, because we deserve to stand. Mm -hmm. We deserve to dance under the moon. We deserve to be professional, to wear a shirt scarf, to speak up you know no more uh, no more killing women no more beating women no como decimos sí. en español, ni una más ni una menos mm -hmm. I, you know i'm a strong advocate for a couple of things and i i am um uh what do you and uh not what is the other word advocated a uh, activist 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 yes. yeah I'm an activist mm -hmm. and an advocate for two organizations that I've been working and, and doing things with them during the pandemic, too. Mm. Uh, one is a organization that protects uh, people, women, uh, survivors of domestic abuse. Oh, and wow. another one is Clear Mom Air Force, that we advocate for clear air, clear water, a lot oh, of things that awesome. has to do with the environment. So mm. this song is the end of the show. And I, at the end, I put pictures of many women that have been important in my life. And, and people in the audience are there and they start putting pictures of women that they love. And oh. it was a really special moment. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my God, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. You might have to cut it off because it's kind of a long song. It's kind of a long song. <laughs> okay, well, we'll at least... <laughs> show a little like so people can have an idea and yeah. the, the, this is still available if people want to go in my website and watch it um it's still available if people want to support and yeah so we'll put we'll put it on the on the link on the chat right now a link to um be able to watch it uh this is you know uh, still available on claudia cunha's website um, and you can, you know, purchase it to watch the whole, um, the whole show. So right now you're, ca you're, ca you're, you all are, are lucky tonight and you're getting a little taste of, yeah. of, uh, what we're going to be showing. And so this song is on your album as well. It's called Hey, yeah. and, uh, it was a live, um, a live show that was uh, with with uh, people tuning in on Zoom. So I'm looking forward to listening to that. So turn up your volumes and <laughs> let's check out uh, this small. We're going to just play a, sh a short part of it. Yeah. Um, I'll keep this later 
in my website so people can also have a tease and watch the whole song if they want it. Perfect, perfect. So you all are lucky tonight because you're going to get to check out the uh, pay-per-view of this uh, beautiful <laughs> show. <laughs> so here we go. This is uh, Claudia Cunha singing Hey. Um, this last song, it was um, a song that I wrote in a way for myself, but then I realized it can imply for so many women that feel this way because we are one and we deserve to dance under the moon naked if we wish. We are a force of nature embraced by the biggest mother of all, our mother earth, La Pachamama. This song is dedicated to all the women in this world, especially the ones that mean the world to me. Okay, this is Hey.
I hate to stop it right in the middle of when it's like getting good and the musicians and wow, what a great production. Um, you know, just watching that video from the perspective of being in a live show. I, I loved the whole production. I love the idea that, you know, people on Zoom and the screen in front of you. And first of all, I love the song. I was I that's like, whoa, when I first heard this new album, I was like, Hey, Claudia Acuña, like, again, it was just like, why didn't I think of something? You know what I mean? It's like, why is it like that you always surprise me? I love, love, loved that song. Um, It's such a great tune. But like, I love the production and everything that kind of just came about with this whole project. So people, if you want to finish watching this and watch the entire show and get that experience, we put on the chat here um, to go to Claudia Acuña's uh page on her website and you can purchase you know purchase that and that again supports the artists um and so that you can watch this entire show claudia so you were saying this theater like where it, it was in northampton but like wh where what is it or like it's an opera theater uh, i didn't know this uh but the, my partners in crimes and co-producers they're from the Northamptons, and ah. they told me that this is the oldest opera house oh my in God. the country. It's a beautiful building, you know? You feel like you're in Europe or something yeah. like that. Yeah, um, beautiful. And they have access to that. It was cheaper to do it there than do it in New York, unfortunately. And taking the historical of the place and yeah we just... wanted to give an experience to the audience of the closest thing to be in a concert to have this live to have this from a theater and to have the audience live and soon mm. yeah and it was great especially because people didn't know what to expect so it was oh cute. yeah <laughs> that was beautiful and and the art and the musicians playing in this video are they the same ones that you had mentioned earlier in the album or were there different musicians uh, uh, there tonight? The same except for the drummer. The drummer is Rodrigo Recabarre. Oh, okay, great. There's Pablo Vergara on piano, Carlos Henderson on bass, Juan Chorrera on guitar, and Rodrigo Recabarre on uh, drums. Oh, that's beautiful. I loved, I loved it. I think, I mean, I... I'm going to go and make sure I purchase the, the pay-per-view so I could watch, you know, grab myself a little glass of wine and watch it and just enjoy, you know, that experience of, you know, at least being as close as I can to a live performance. Um, so please, everybody, please go out and, and, and support that and check that out. And we've put that on the chat. So um, Hopefully we'll do another one and the idea is to have. It's another project that I'm working that hopefully will come true at some point. Yeah. Well, look, if you're a you're a trailblazer, you're a go getter, you're a, a, a pusher, you're you're somebody that again, this is why we're having you on, on today's show and really highlighting all the the steps that you're taking that are pushing the boundaries and barriers that people aren't taking, you know, um, right now or maybe might not be able to, but because you're doing that, that's also paving the way for all of us to follow and, and, and take your lead and, and take the risk, right? Take the risk. It's, uh, you know, making sure we take the risk. And I love the attitude. I love your presence and, and how you, you know, come about everything and, and what you're doing for the better of the people and for the community. So thank you for that. 
Um, so we're almost towards the end, which I'm like, no, because I, I just want to keep Claudia on here forever. But, but, but Claudia, what are, what are some other, um, ways that our audience members tuning in tonight, um, that can support you? Uh, you know, what, what are, you know, like you said, people can go to your website, can check out any upcoming, obviously you said you'll be updating your website. Um, but in the case that, you know, I know you're active on Instagram and Facebook, on the social media platforms. Um, is that another way people can kind of stay up to date with some of your stuff or wh what's the best place? Uh, the best. I'm doing the best I can with Instagram. Yeah. Uh, which is connected to my Facebook. And in the website, you can see right now, as you mentioned, still available on demand, the show that we did on March 6, which, you know, I even have the pleasure to have some words of wisdom for women from the amazing Isabel Allende. Mm. So if you want to hear and see that. And a few other special guests, women that I love and they're great singers and musicians that I wanted to invite. Um, but also there is the link for my BAM camp. And, you know, in the pandemic right now, I'm just trying to work towards the next album. And Instagram and my website is the best way to communicate. Um, I always I teach a little bit in the in the middle of the pandemic, but between remote uh, learning from my child and other things that I was working on this project, I took a minute uh, to, to not do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need some time. You need your, your space. Y para la gente que hablan en español y latina, también, ¿cómo, cómo pueden ayudar o, o, o apoyarte en, en todos los proyectos que estamos hablando hoy en, en nuestro uh, show? Bueno, invito a toda mi comunidad latina que mi página web o en mi Instagram y ahí van informándose y está en, uh, disponible el show del 6 de marzo en mi página web. Y bueno, siempre pueden ir a YouTube uh -huh. y ayudar a subir los números en Instagram o YouTube y BAM Camp, como lo mencionamos anterior, donde está disponible el disco Turning Pages. Y los invito a que apoyen en esa forma porque como lo hablábamos tempranamente vía BAM Camp los músicos hoy por hoy es donde reciben eh, la cantidad casi el 100% de, de, de lo que el comprador apoya comprando música así es que los invito a ir a BAM Camp sí por favor apoyen a Claudia Acuña y todos los artistas, a todos los, ah, todos los mundos de los que están en Van Camp. Y sobre todo de Jazz Exchange, que Gracias. ustedes están haciendo cosas tan lindas, ¿no? Gracias. Eh, a, a tu servicio, si alguna vez puedo apoyar los proyectos que hacen con niños, educación, sería un privilegio. Sí, muchas gracias. Y thank you, everybody. Um, Claudia, any last words suggestions advice to our young generation our future generation uh people today and just what's going on in our world today any anything you'd like to to end our show with for people to keep in mind please stay put please be patient please wear your mask please don't gather and if you gather now that spring and summer is coming, you can do it outside and with distance. Please vote. Mm -hmm. Please be kind with yourself and then to others. If things don't work today, is always tomorrow. Mm. Um, listen. Sometimes listen, listening in silence is a lot of music. Definitely. Thank you so much for those um, words and things to remember about each and every day in life. And it has truly, truly been a huge honor for us to have you in today's show. And for those who haven't weren't able to tune in live with us, it's all going to be living on our YouTube and our Facebook page. So if you miss Claudia Cunha tonight, 
um, then you'll still have the opportunity to check it out uh, on our on our Jazz Exchange Facebook page and YouTube channel. Uh, again, muchas gracias, uh, Claudia. Thank you so much for sharing all the beautiful stories, your music. Uh, we wish you the best. We're also here, uh, mi casa, su casa. We're here to support and, <laughs> and be part of, of supporting our artists. And uh, thank you again for this wonderful evening with you. And for those of you watching, next, uh, next week we're going to be having the amazing Dave Stryker uh, guitarist uh, as our special guest so please tune in and again thank you adios a todos gracias and bye bye okay. have a good night thank you, you. Good dreams. <laughs> bye
But be 